I'm a big believer that like the best writing doesn't happen in isolation. Um, and so whether it's an audience, whether it's an editor, I think having, you know, I think the myth of like the genius who goes into the forest and just cranks out, you know, the next great novel is, is a myth. Hey everyone, it's Corey, and uh, I'm here today with Andrew Askins, who is the co-founder and CEO of Crit. Hey, Andrew. Hey. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks for taking some time to chat. Um, so Crit's really awesome. It's a I, thanks, your story man. is awesome, actually, too, because you were a startup that turned into this development studio. Um, yeah. Which I, which I think is pretty killer. Um, and your focus is like helping non-technical co-founders basically turn their ideas into like incredible products so yeah exactly awesome, awesome. okay um, see our messaging is working <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i um so I, i've been familiar a little bit with you just kind of like i i think i actually discovered you on product time originally just from commenting on things so i know you're like in the product space a lot yeah um but you also um run a very popular newsletter um, which has a cool story behind it too, called Startup Watching, um, which has a massive, uh, well, over 10,000 plus, I don't know, what are you at now, subscriber wise? Yeah, so um, I haven't been doing a ton to promote it lately, so it's actually shrinking a little bit right now. Okay. Um, we're about 10,200 right now. Okay, um, still and massive. Got <laughs> pretty, pretty good size, um, yeah. and I've, you know, I've been toying with whether or not I should uh, pare that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um thinking about that a little bit lately but yeah it's still a, a good size cool. newsletter and um mm -hmm. people really dig it cool yeah and so and then i i know you also write a bit about you know for your own personal blog your own i think you have your own newsletter that you're writing on um so i thought you'd be awesome to talk to just because you're somebody that's in this entrepreneurial space but you do like leverage writing a lot and your familiarity with newsletters um and seeing the content that people are reading um is there anything in particular you're kind of focused on these days with your writing efforts? Uh, so I was actually just um, sitting down today. Really, I was procrastinating on the things that I needed to be doing. I needed to be doing some really boring writing. Uh, <laughs> I needed to be writing up a PIPO white paper for a client. Uh, okay. That's not super fun writing. So right. instead, I was procrastinating on that and uh, thinking through my goals for 2019. Oh. Um, and one of my goals is just to try, um, Nathan Berry has done this before and, um, some other people I admire, but I, I really just want to try to get in more of a habit of writing every single day. Ah, um, okay. Interesting. So, so that's, why, why that's is one of that? the things, um, for a few reasons. One, there are a couple of big writing projects that I would love to launch in 2019. Um, specifically we're working on, I don't know yet if it's going to be a book or a course or like a workbook or something, but we have this thing that has sort of been in the back of our heads for about six months now at crit. And I really want to get that launched. And that's going to take, I think a good bit of writing and maybe some video and other stuff. I, again, okay. still haven't totally figured it out yet. <laughs> um, yeah. so one, I just want to do that. Um, and then two, through startup watching and through some of the crit stuff, I just realized that like, I feel, I often feel like most fulfilled and like proud of myself, like have the most self-esteem when I'm just creating things, when I'm putting stuff out into the world. Um, and yet I have what I consider to be pretty terrible productivity habits. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I am a chronic procrastinator. And so this is, this goal is part of my attempt to make that a more consistent part of my life so that I have that feeling of fulfillment and like, uh, just, you know, self-esteem boosting more regularly. Yeah, no, I know that feeling. It's like, um, actually talk with uh, a former guest was, it was just talking about too, like some of it's kind of like momentum, like you have to kind of keep that feeling there to keep you moving a little bit. Yeah. Um, but what's curious about this is like, so what, why is it you're going to the writing to do this? Right. Cause you could just like, you could just do it, but what is it about the writing process right now? That's helping you figure this out. Like, <laughs> uh, 
when you say do it, you mean like your launching goals. this product? Oh, your goals in yeah. general. Like you're using it, it seems, as kind of like a thinking process, I guess. Yeah, definitely using it as a thinking process. And that's something that I had heard for a long time. You know, Ryan Hoover has talked about that a good bit, is like about how writing helps him think through things. Um, and I hadn't really experienced that, I don't think, until this year. And this year, um, I've, I've had multiple scenarios where writing really helped me organize my thoughts. Um, but it's also, you know, I just... Um, yeah, it's right now it's what I know how to do. Like video is something that um, I've started experimenting with a little bit, but um, writing is much more approachable to me right now. It gives you a chance to edit more easily, I guess. I guess you can edit video or audio too. Yep. Um, and so writing just, yeah, it helps me organize my thoughts. It's something that, um, it builds over time. Like you mentioned momentum, the more pieces of writing you have out there, the more they all connect to each other and the better, like the more it lifts you up in general. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm answering your question. But yeah, no, I, but I get what you're talking about. It's like, uh, um, it, for you, it's a familiar way, but it, I, I was more just trying to get at to like, what, why do that in the first place? Like why try to write your goals or go through that thinking process in general? Oh, like why try to even sit down and write out my goals? Yeah, just, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's totally just um, helping me organize things. Uh, so I like was diagnosed in like, I don't know, six years ago now uh, with ADHD. Mm -hmm. um, and so my brain, I mean, ADHD is one of those things that like everyone has a little bit of it. Right, <laughs> right. Um, but my brain just always feels like kind of a, a mess of things, a chaotic mess of different threads being pulled in all sorts of directions. Um, and part of what I've learned over the years is just learning to accept that and live within that. And um, But also when I can create some clarity, um, it, it just, it helps me relax. It helps me feel more in control. Um, and feel more like settled. Uh, and so like goals are one of those things that, I mean, I can show you the, the, the list I've got. I started with like 30 of them wow. and then I started trying to pare it down. So I've got, I'm like, I feel like I'm pulling myself in a million different directions and writing them down and just, and literally I'm not like, I might write a, write something about, about this, but, um, I was just doing it for myself and I was just using like the notes app on my computer because mm -hmm. it's the most accessible thing to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was purely just so that I could figure out what I really wanted to do in 2019. Got it. Yep. And then what, um, why, what's your goal about writing every day? Like, why do you want to be doing that? What's the inspiration behind that? Yeah. I mean, like I said, it, it's really about, being able to consistently produce and get that feeling of feeling more um, productive, feeling like I'm, you know, it's one of those things that when I do create something, it does sort of. Um, you ever listen to Armchair Expert Dax Shepard's podcast? No, no, I'm not familiar. Man, it's become, it's become okay. one of my favorites. It just started this year, um, but he's constantly talking about the idea of like self esteem. So he's a pretty successful actor, right? Okay. Um, and he's married to Kristen Bell. Um, I don't know if that rings. Oh, Dak Shepard. Yeah. Yes, I know. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he he interviews all these really famous people, and one of the consistent threads is he asks them, you know, like once you got that level of success that you're getting to, right. um, you know, what did what problems did you think that was going to solve, and then did it actually solve ha. those problems? Interesting. And yeah. inevitably, the answer is no. Of course not. I got the money and I'm still worried I'm going to run out of money. I got the fame and I'm still worried I'm not going to be able to get a job next month. Huh. Yeah. Um, and so he talks, the other thing he talks about is the flip side of that is figuring out the things like the fame, the success is not going to fill you up. So finding the things that do. Mm. And I think creating for a lot of people is one of those things that does. Um, and so I really just want to, have that feeling it's yeah. just it's kind of like it's a selfish thing i just want to have that feeling more 
Um, and I know that if I can build the habit, then a lot of the success that I also want will likely follow. Right. It's like indicative of, it's like what it takes basically. Like, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. It kind of helps you like, uh, so that's kind of one thing I've been experiencing with writing too, is it's kind of like, you see it, you see it's, I think that's kind of what you were talking about too. Like when you have 30 plus goals, can you really visualize in your head 30 things at one time? It's hard yeah. to, but then when, yeah. But then when you like get them down, then you can actually start to pare them down and prioritize and all that kind of stuff. So it's interesting. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and especially if you're writing for other people, when you're writing for yourself, you can be a little sloppier, but when you're writing for other people, then it really forces you to figure out how to, you know, how to say the thing you're trying to say and how to, you know, how to organize it in a way that, um, you know, someone else could understand. Right. Right. Um, so yeah. And I know, so actually when I launched Blur, I was very grateful for some of your feedback early on and you were talking a lot about how you use writing, obviously like you have your clients, um, Mm -hmm. you have like documents you're writing together, all these different types of writing, Mm -hmm. uh, that are like, not necessarily, it's more like communication. So there's some value, yeah. obviously, a lot, yeah. Um, but I'm curious with your newsletter, what type, or you know, with startup watching in general, just from like what types of content tends to be the most engaging or interesting of all the stuff that comes through. There's a lot of trends um, over time, but from like, yeah. yeah. So what kinds of content seem to be the most engaging to the audience? Is that yeah, yeah. Um. So it's a little, I'm, I'm still very honestly trying to figure that out. Like what okay. is it that the audience yeah. really wants to see? Yeah. Um, one of the biggest pieces, like the, one of the things that got just the most clicks, if, if we're measuring um, engagement in terms of clicks this year was um, Buffer wrote a piece on um, buying back, uh, buying out their investors. Okay. And it, it sort of took off on Twitter first and then I shared it and it, it seemed to do really well. Um, so the sort of easy answer is that was kind of like the perfect storm of, um, you know, it was a big name, a big enough name that a lot of people knew it. So, you know, that helps when that's something that people want to sort of tend to gravitate towards a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was also something that was just different, right? Like not very many people. I mean, the interesting thing is it's actually sort of, there's a trend happening right now where a lot of companies are doing this, but Buffer was one of the first, uh, Buffer and I think Wistia were some of the first two to really talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it just stood out as being different and weird. And, um, and of course, Buffer is great at this. Like they're great at using transparency as a, a marketing tool. And right. um, so, you know, they didn't just say, "Hey, we bought out our investors." They said, "Hey, we spent three million three hundred fifty-seven thousand nine hundred twenty-one dollars, <laughs> or something yeah. like that." <laughs> yeah, it's very specific. Um, yeah, so that was something that I noticed really resonated with people. I mean, that newsletter performed better than than most. Um, mm-hmm. I've also noticed. Um, I've tried to bring a much more personal touch to Startup Watching. So part of the backstory of Startup Watching is that I didn't start it. Um, it was started by a guy named Ron Constein, who's based in Amsterdam, really influential guy on Product Hunt, really neat, neat dude. Yep. Um, and I actually purchased it from him in March um, and took it over. And one of the things that I wanted to bring to it was a little bit more personal touch. Um, and uh, I don't see that affecting like numbers. Um, I don't see it affecting like open rates or, um, you know, click rates a whole lot. Like those have stayed relatively constant. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I get a lot of qualitative feedback that that's working. Um, and that that's something that's resonating with people. Mm Um, and it's something that I just want to do for myself because I enjoy like I'm someone who's just a thousand percent motivated by like human connection and like getting to know other people. And, so it's like this little way to be connected to all of these people. Right. Um, so that's something that I like am trying to do with startup watching and that seems to be working. But again, like the buffer thing, I can clearly point to the numbers and be like this yeah. outperformed I other guess... newsletters. This got more clicks, whereas that's more something that I just feel like people are resonating. 
Yeah. And I think it probably had a lot to do with, um, I mean, like you said, it was just weird, like surprising in some sense. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so what about the, so I've gone through a lot of like your, uh, past medium articles and, um, I'm, I'm curious (laughs) and (laughs) yeah. And, uh, also, also just looking at like crits content in general, um, there's been a trend over the last, like, you know, two to three years or even more, but like, obviously, I mean, buffers actually kind of led a lot of that themselves too, which is just content marketing as blogging. Right. So like generating Mm -hmm. interesting content, um, how has that been working for crit? And I, it sounds like you're kind of like looking to maybe change that strategy, say in the next, um, coming year or whatever, but I'm just curious from like a blogging, writing content perspective, like how has that been a value to crit into yourself? Yeah, I would actually say we're going to be doubling down on it okay. in, in the coming year. Uh, if there's any change, it's just going to be trying to do more of it. Um, so we, we have, Content marketing has always been something that just sort of felt right to us. Um, in the very early days of Crit, when we were a startup, we were in an agency, we had a different audience, we were selling to freelancers. Um, the only way we really knew how to get in front of those people was, was just to write something. Like content marketing, the thing I love about content marketing, um, marketing always felt a little weird to me. Like advertising still feels a little sleazy to me. It's like... Yeah. It feels like shoving shit in people's faces. Um, Whereas content marketing, when it's done well, is a trade. It's a, I give you this thing for free. You give me your attention for a little while. And it's ideally both of us are better off for it. Um, And so as someone who was not a traditional marketer, um, you know, I was a developer by trade. um, You know, it was easier for me to go, Oh, I'll write this thing. I'll try to do this thing and help somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that makes it easier for me to ask for something in return from them. So it's, it's kind of always been, um, the type of marketing that made the most sense to us. Um, but again, the thing that I've always struggled with the most is consistency. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for a long time we knew it was important and we knew we wanted to be doing it. And, you know, it helped us in some of the ways like that we were talking about. It helped us organize our thoughts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't really helping us with marketing a whole lot because we just weren't doing it all that consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this year, uh, you know, I finally just sort of said, screw it. I'm going to hire someone to help with this. Um, and we started, uh, so we hired my friend Laura Bosco, who's a super talented writer. Um, and we started just with like, a weekly newsletter for crit. So <laughs> separate from startup watching similar audience, but like two separate things. Yeah. So mm-hmm. crits weekly newsletter, we started working on with her. Um, and then I was still trying to like push the blog along and, you know, I might get a, a post or two out a month and then I'd have a month where I got zero posts out. So blog was still a little inconsistent, but the newsletter, once I hired that out, all of a sudden was very consistent. Um, and consistency you realize is just one of those things that is just hugely important for yeah. content marketing in particular to be Interesting. successful. Interesting. Um, and it's consistency over time. Like you got to create good stuff, you know, all that stuff. You got to be creative about how you get it out there, but really it boils down to just consistently putting in the work over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the newsletter started working. Um, people were really responding to it. It was really, you know, again, it was a lot of qualitative feedback. Like it wasn't, it's not like our newsletter went from, you know, I think it was at about 1500 subscribers. It's now at about 1800. So it's not like we had, you know, insane doubled the size of our list or anything, but people just started responding and reaching out on a regular basis. And awesome. Yeah. And that was kind of enough. Um, how often and, were you guys putting out content with the newsletter? We were putting out a newsletter every week and we still do that. Um, and then I was still at the time trying to, um, write a blog post every now and then. Um, and then again, I got to a point where I was like, all right, maybe I should just hire someone to do the blog post too. It's working for the newsletter. Um, so we hired a a content marketing agency to, um, for like three months that sort of worked, but it just wasn't the right fit. Uh, we just, approach content a little bit differently. Um, and so 
but it was helpful because for three months we got two blog posts out a month. And so it was just helpful in help building up some of that, um, some of that, uh, sort of archive. Um, and then we actually ended up wrapping things up with them. Um, but Laura at the time, she'd been part-time on a before like freelancing and okay. had had a full-time job as well. She left her full-time job, went all in on freelancing. So it kind of worked out beautifully Perfect. that yeah. we had her start doing uh, content as well. So she now does two blog posts a month and three newsletters a month. Okay. And then I do one newsletter for crit a month and one blog post a month for crit. So it's basically um, like two pieces of content a week almost or something like that. It's yeah, yeah. it's close okay. to two pieces of content a week. Okay. Um, and again, didn't all of a sudden we haven't seen any crazy spike in traffic. Um, but we're slow. We're, we're on that slow ramp up. I can start seeing, you know, that's this time last year is better than last time, this time last year. Um, so I think that's and, interesting about writing. Cause like, I think what's hard, I know for myself even is like, it does take consistency. There's like some part, we hear it all the time, right? We hear it like yeah. you guys stick with it, but the problem is, and it's just like the me generation problem of like, there's no return it takes. It's yeah. like you put something out there and nobody cares or like, you know, it's like, what is this doing? But I think what it is, is that writing consistently gives it legitimacy because otherwise you're just yeah. like noise. Right. So if you're yep. like, if you're building a strong signal, that's what consistency gives you in some way. Totally. So, and yeah. you're seeing that you're, you're, you're actually, you build yeah. trust yeah. with people as well. You mm -hmm. prove to them that you're going to show up next week and it's worth it to follow you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you think about like every now and then I'll realizing I'm, I'm following a lot of people on Twitter and I'll go try to pare it down a little bit and I'll look at an account and if they haven't posted anything in like three months, then it's like, why am I bothering with this? Yeah, right. Uh, that's a normal reaction. So you build trust and legitimacy exactly. Um, and yeah, we're now starting to see the the fruits of that with Crit. Um, we actually uh, just today I got a signed contract for a deal that'll be worth at least thirty thousand dollars, maybe as much as you know eighty. Um, and that person had never met me before and came discovered wow. our newsletter and came entirely through our website, which a year ago had never, ever happened. Yeah, that made it all worth it right there, that alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Amazing, amazing. Uh -huh. Yeah, and and, I, and like you said too, it's like, it's that like historical factor. Like you don't know, like what, you, you know, like just it exists out there and you don't know like what, when or what's gonna, like who's gonna read it and it might matter. Um, totally. And it's hard to appreciate that every day, so. That's yeah. it's it's mind blowing. It's really cool to hear from you, you know, like the experience of that. I mean, that's like inspiring to people to realize like why you need to stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did something kind of fun the other day. I like again, I'm not someone who's like insanely numbers driven, but I try to at least keep track of the stuff. And um, I noticed that like a little bit more of our traffic this month was coming from SEO, like than uh, from organic search than before. And you know you hear, especially with organic search, that it just takes tons of time. It's a real, real, real slow ramp. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, it had always just seemed kind of static. Uh, but then I was like, I wonder what would happen if I stopped looking at this like a few months at a time and went and looked at like the past three years. And sure enough, there was that ramp. I just had to step back far enough to see it. Yeah, um, that's so cool. Which seems so obvious. Like <laughs> <laughs> I like, know, yeah. It's funny when you're in the weeds, you're, you can't see the forest of the trees, like they say, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, but it's, I think it's just believing it's like, it's like, I've started feeling that way about entrepreneurship too, that like half of it is literally just like defeating doubt. Like if you have the drive, like half of it is just like keeping going, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, and again, it's, it's consistency. Like it's all these slow things that build over time. Um, especially with agencies, I think tech startups, you know, there can be, you can sort of hit a viral point inflection yeah. point at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, although we're getting a lot of pushback, you know, we're seeing a trend right now. People are pushing back on whether that's a healthy thing or not, right. which is really cool to see. Yep. Um, but with agencies in particular, if you look at agencies that are wildly successful or not even wildly successful, but just really successful, almost none of them have been around for less than 10 years. Because it just like 
you just got to survive. Right. You just got to survive long enough to build <laughs> connections and to figure your stuff out and figure out how to talk about yourself and build up, you know, articles on your blog and build up pages on your website and build up, um, you know, positive referrals and yep. all of this stuff. Uh, so, it just takes time. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, we're close on time, but I'm going to keep us going is, um, so I know in the new year, so like, obviously like now you're seeing some kind of the payoff from all this writing. Um, but you've been talking about conceivably doing some like more other media types. Um, and I'm curious why that is. It's cool to hear that you're confirming that you're going to continue to write. Like there's totally value there. It's not going anywhere. Um, and obviously it's going to take some amount of bandwidth. I mean, you had to hire somebody to do help you with the writing, you know? So, Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to figure out, I'm sure for yourself, but where do you find the place for like other media types? What's the drive there? That's a good question. I don't have an answer for that yet. Interesting. I'm trying to figure that out. So I actually, as part of that goal process, I, you know, a couple of my goals, one of my goals was to write 500 words every day. Um, another goal was to grow. I've, I've started experimenting a little bit with live streaming on YouTube. Okay. Um, and so one of my goals was to grow that, uh, another goal was to launch a podcast. Um, and part of this exercise for me was saying, looking at all those things and saying, nah, if you're going to be successful, you can only pick one of these for the first quarter, at least. Mm-hmm. So for the first quarter, the, um, the only one of those that I'm going to try to do is write every day for, um, write 500 words every day. Uh, and again, the reason I think I picked writing was because it, it is a little bit more familiar to me and because I want to build a product that is going to involve a lot of writing and it just sort of fit with what I want to do right now. Okay. Um, I still think like in terms of SEO and stuff, it's, it's hard to beat right now. Yeah. Um, but I just, I think the reason I want to experiment with those other mediums is, you know, it's just cause I find them so interesting. I love coming on podcasts and talking to people. Like I just love talking to people in general. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. There, I, mean, I think you're right. That's, that's a very powerful reason. It's like that. Can, it, there's something when you write, it's super powerful because you're, it's ideas, right? It's like something bubbly, right. but there's some, like, there's also some magic, obviously in this like physical connection, like, or we're not yeah. physical, but like the digital conversation or whatever, you know? No, yeah. yeah. I, I can see you and we can have back and forth that is harder to have in writing. Right. Um, I mean, you can have good journalism, which has a little bit of that, but, right. uh, and then like the same thing with video. Like, I think I've just come to admire so many video creators out there that I'm like, Oh man, I want to do that in part just so that I can meet those people. And in part so that I can, um, just play around with it because it seems so fun and it seems so interesting yeah. and powerful. Yeah, and I think video, there was a, man, who was it? Was it the, I think it's the Envision blog. If you haven't seen it, it's a really good article about, they're calling it VX Movement. I don't know if you saw this. Huh. Um, no. but, uh, I don't know if it was video experience or visual experience. It's just kind of like their you know, spin on UX 2.0 or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, <laughs> but the, the importance of like visual media in your app yeah. and and i know like crit has a great That's video super interesting. you know uh because because of what it's almost like expected now like to have just this flat yeah. ui with animations so what you know if you can actually bring in some like experiential ideals in through video it it explains things so much better um and it gives it Absolutely. some kind of like pow- power but it's just, obviously it's just a different medium it's like a different way of, yeah. of doing it and it's so time intensive when you start mm. <laughs> when you start breaking it down you're like yeah, that's wow. a good point although although again part of that is because i especially with visual stuff tend to be a bit of a perfectionist like if i were you know there are people creating incredible video content with like a handheld iphone right so you can do it a lot simpler i'm just <laughs> especially when it comes to visuals i get yeah. i get a little perfectionist yeah. um which i is maybe a fault. Well, and yeah, and I, I think something like Snapchat, Instagram stories, right? Like the, it's lowering mm-hmm. the bar a little bit on the expectation. It is, quality. Yeah. But, um, but you're but right. But then at the same time, if you invest the time to yeah. create the quality, then it helps you stand out above the million people just for sure. holding their phone up. Uh, yeah. In and front I, of their face. I think for products now, that bar is kind of like, it's, 
slowly raising up a little bit now, you know, on, on expectations. Uh, super so interesting. That's yeah. That's a whole other story. We can yeah, talk exactly. all about yeah. <laughs> products and the expectations people have for UX design now versus five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, bring it back to the writing. It's super interesting. I mean, obviously, uh, there's some power, I think, like you were saying, how time intense, obviously writing good t- content takes time, but there is some power to just being able to like open up a notepad and just bam, jot things in there. And you never, you know, you could, it's just a little easier to like, Mm -hmm. that first step towards something. I mean, even creating a video, you're probably going to write a little bit of a document before you create the video potentially. So, yeah, Yeah, I think so. Although that's what was appealing to me about live streaming was Ah. you, you didn't really have to do that. It was like, felt kind of like a cheat code where it was like, Oh, here's, you have permission for this to be raw and you have permission for this to be unedited because it's happening live and you physically can't edit it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's a very good point. I think that's the beauty of it from a content creation standpoint, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Although um, if I were, if I were really good, I'd go in and I'd edit it afterwards and pull pieces wow. out and create uh, yeah, more create, content from you that. You could create more content. That's a great idea. Um, yeah. Is there any advice you would have from your experiences um, on like on writing? Like if somebody, like, where do you find ideas? How do you stick with it? Is there any kind of like tricks or things that you can think of that have helped you in your writing experience? So I've thought about that a lot recently um, because as I mentioned, I think the most important thing is consistency, but I'm someone who just like consistency is not one of my strong suits. I'm, I'm a pretty creative person. I, I have good vision. Um, You know, a lot of that sort of wishy-washy <laughs> soft skills kind of stuff I'm very good at. Uh, but when it comes to consistently cranking things out, man, that's just a struggle for me. Again, part of why I set that 2019 goal for myself is yeah. I want to go against that. Yeah. Um, I want to change that. But um, that means that I have tried to get creative with finding ways to uh, hack my motivation, mm-hmm. if you will, um, mm-hmm. and try to sort of force myself to, um, to, to show up consistently. Um, and unfortunately some of these things cost money. Um, so like start of watching was one of the ways I did that. Mm. Uh, you know, with the crit newsletter, it had a smaller audience, um, and like basically zero expectations cause it was just sort of whatever we made it. So I really struggled to send it consistently week after week. Um, I was my own boss. So I, Right. You know, there was no one to hold me accountable. Interesting. But with the start of watching newsletter, I bought it in part because there was this initial audience and there were these people expecting a newsletter at the time twice a week. Interesting. Um, and so it was just, it was an immediate way to like, I could not do it because yeah. it had already been being done for a year and people were expecting it. And, you know, there was a lot more to lose if I failed. Yeah. So that kind of reminds me of like a gym membership or something, you know, like if you're spending that money, it's going to force you to do it a little bit. And it honestly was only a little bit about the money. I mean, it was a significant amount of money for me, but it's mostly the people. uh, It was, yeah, yeah, it was just the people who were sort of on the other end of it. Um, So that's one way hiring Laura was like another way. It was like admitting to myself when I wasn't going to consistently do something. Mm -hmm. Um, And the cheaper version of that is to hire an editor. Um, because if you hire an editor, you can sort of set deadlines for yourself mm-hmm. and then, you know, a freelance editor probably has other clients. And so you don't want to make them the late for their other clients <laughs> because you didn't get your shit to them in time. That's good. So yeah. that's, I think, and that's part of what Laura does as well is like the pieces okay. that I'm writing, she'll often edit. And again, that's just a way of me hacking my motivation a little bit. Interesting. Um, yeah. That's yeah. super cool. I like, I've been thinking about, I, did you read Atomic Habits? This, I yeah. have not read it okay. yet. I actually, I heard about it on Twitter and, uh, you know, saw a million people talking about it. And then just today I was reading, I like discovered James Clear, okay. didn't realize he was the person who wrote Atomic Habits. Ah, and okay. I was right. I was reading his guide to goal setting, which Got is it. what led me to setting my ah. goals earlier today. Awesome. You're going to, I mean, Read it. You, you will absolutely yes. love it. But he has a very interesting, yeah. um, it's kind of like loss aversion or whatever, but like making bad habits unattractive and good habits attractive, which is interesting, right? I mean, it's, there's, there's like motivation and all this other stuff, but if you can like 
make a bad habit unattractive. So like this editor concept, those, those types of hacks are super interesting and they're hard to like conceptualize. So interesting. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, like for some people, like I'm lucky enough that crit had the resources to hire Laura. Right. You know, mm -hmm. for some people it's going to be a struggle, but again, you can find a pretty good editor for like 30 to 50 bucks an hour. Um, and oh, man, it's so worth it. So, so I think, yeah, I, so I have something in store for you, buddy, on Blurt, because I'm working on a writing goals feature. <laughs> oh, I saw this. That, I got really yeah. excited about this. So, yeah, so I'm like, God, you know, one person building this dang thing, but I'm excited to get it out. <laughs> but I'm I'm still working on this very thing, which is, okay, so what? I'm tracking, you're going to fail a day, and it puts a red check mark or whatever. How do I help us still not want to get the red check mark. That's something. And there's also something really satisfying about filling up this like experience bar every day or whatever your goals are. Like as you write words, it's like filling up this thing. Um, but I think what I really like, and this is probably what works for somebody like yourself with startup watching and successful writers is like having an audience. And so mm -hmm. figuring out how to be held accountable to another group of people in some way is like a super powerful um, thing. So, yeah. All right, well, and I told you oh, go ahead, go ahead. originally that uh, no, I was just going to say I'm a big believer that like the best writing doesn't happen in isolation. Uh -huh. um, and so whether it's an audience, whether it's an editor, I think having, you know, I think the myth of like the genius who goes into the forest and just cranks out, you know, the next great novel is, is a myth. Right. Yeah. There's like a, there's like a society or something that helped that person become get those ideas or, you know, and share them or whatever. So, yeah. All right, man. Um, so yes. So obviously we talked a lot about all the awesome stuff you're up to. Um, build built by crit.com is, um, yeah. is Andrew's company. It's, if yep. Um, yep. K R I T. Okay. K R I T. Um, and they've got a great blog. They got a newsletter. He's also, like I said, if you go to startupwatching.com. Um, you can find them, uh, find the newsletter that's just got like great product, uh, news as well as just like startup. It's mostly about startup information, but it's got a lot of great like top articles. Um, and then, uh, he's also on Twitter, always up sharing great stuff and interesting things he finds as well. Um, so definitely go, uh, have a look at what Andrew's up to. And I, again, thanks for taking time to chat with us for a little bit. Yeah. Thanks, man. This was a lot of fun. Cool. Awesome. Well, we'll be talking soon and, uh, I'll be talking to all of you soon too as well. <laughs>